So Peyton says overtime real rules still uh, put a premium on the coin toss. Nate, do you agree? I agree 100%. It seems like it's, it's the luck of the draw on the coin toss, and obviously there's some skill after that. You're going to have to go down there and score, but... You know, I was going to answer this two ways. I was going to say as a fan and then as a player, but I'll answer it one way. As a fan and a player, uh, I want to see competitive nature throughout the rest of the game. So as I was watching the game, which I did, after they scored, I would have loved to see what, what Peyton could do. Even though I feel like Seattle won the game, deserved to win the game, I still feel like uh, I was a little cheated. It's like watching a heavyweight fight that you know is going to go 12 rounds, but somebody gets knocked out early, and you don't get the, a chance for another guy to come up and throw his blows. Uh, and, and that's how I felt, you know. The league is, is meant to appease the fans. That's the direction it's going in. Um, there's a lot of consumers. You know, I'm a consumer. I watch it. I, I pay for the games. I pay for the jerseys. And, and, and I celebrate what it is the, the league is. So I want to see the game last as long as it possibly can. And that's just me speaking selfishly of it. Stephen A. <sighs> you know, as hard as these guys have to work to get themselves in, a, in the appropriate level of condition, uh, putting their bodies at risk, making the personal sacrifices that they make just to be out on a football field, with the NFL priding itself on being at the height of competitiveness uh, and as well as parity, fairness, etc., it's pretty much a damn shame that luck has to enter the equation when it comes to overtime. So let me get this straight. You go through all of this that you go through for 60 minutes, you're busting your tail, you're fighting, you're putting your body and unquestionably your health on the line. And you tie the game, and it's overtime. And let me see, if I win the coin toss, I get the ball. And all I have to do is get in the end zone, and then I don't have to give it back. Think about this for a second. It is Peyton. Peyton Manning that we're talking about here. One of the greatest quarterbacks in NFL history. And this guy comes back from a 20 to, uh, you know, a, a 17 to 3 deficit. They outscore the Seattle Seahawks, the reigning defending Super Bowl champions, 17 to 3 in the fourth quarter in Seattle, in those hostile confines, in a nationally televised game. It is overtime. And we don't get to see Peyton Manning because he didn't win the coin toss. <laughs> really? I mean, if you really think about it and put it in that context, how pathetic is this rule? Help me out, Nate. I was under the impression that this new rule was agreed upon by the players to be somewhat restrictive again. It's, it's much better than the old rule where you could kick a field goal off the coin toss and right. win. But I thought that you and your fellow players didn't want to have to push your bodies much farther, that it was to save you from yourselves, that, that you wanted to limit how much more football you had to subject your bodies to. Is that not right? That's right. But that was agreed upon by the group of players. I can only speak on myself. And like I said, I'm a very competitive okay. person. Okay, all right. So I, and I realize the situation I'm in. That's a stage we're on. I mean, it is a football game. I've been playing it since I was eight years old. But it is a stage. And we, we are there to entertain as much as okay. we want to win. Okay, well, so the reason I didn't complain about this yesterday on Monday's show, and I didn't even think about it when I was tweeting on Sunday evening, is because this is so much better than the way it was. Because True. you're talking about luck of the draw, luck of the flip here on the coin flip. There's nothing lucky about going 80 yards in 13 plays, Very Mr. True. Russell Wilson, way to go. Right? I mean, that, that's not simple to do. And if you can pull that off... I, I'm okay with that. Like, okay, you, you deserve to win the game. Now, I'm like Steven. I'm like everybody else. Just because Peyton Manning, to me, is the greatest regular season quarterback in history, and just because we had just seen the greatest regular season quarterback somehow go 80 yards against Seattle with 59 seconds no, left and no, no timeouts. Time out. That's impossible. And since he had done it once, the prospect of – of seeing him have a chance to do it again against the same defense that tormented him in the Super Bowl was it was just too good to be true. And so we're all left a little hanging because it didn't seem at that moment sporting not to give Peyton Manning a chance to respond uh, to what Russell Wilson did. But again, Stephen A., they agreed. The, the Players Association did not want well, to subject well, the athletes to have to play more football. <laughs> 
Yeah, 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 but 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 there's a couple of things that you're missing here. Number one, I would have liked to have seen at least I would like to see at least both teams they have to get at least one possession in overtime. That's number one. I don't think that's too much to ask. Number two, Skip Bayless, you keep bringing up what they collectively bargained for. When you're across from the negotiating table with billionaire owners and you're getting eaten alive, as has, you know, as has happened from time to time with collective bargaining negotiations by players, you're going to take what you can get. I'm sure that when the players were talking about what's taxing on their body, et cetera, et cetera, I'm quite sure that the priority was, oh, what if the game goes into overtime? I don't want to play that long. I think it's a situation where you think about the two-a-days and you think about putting on pads and, and, and actually having physical contact and the coaches being able to run you into the ground. I think you're attacking every little nook and cranny that you can to make sure that they don't wear you out so you don't have the Kerry Williams of the world going off about what Chip Kelly is doing yep. on off days. I think that was their primary focus. I don't think the players sat across from the negotiating table, charted this down and said, let's address overtime because we really, really want to go home and we don't want to sit us and find ourselves in a position where, oh, my Lord, overtime arrives and we've got to be, uh, we, 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 don't, we, we want to make sure we curb that significantly. I think there's a lot of other things that go on in terms of the arduous task that is placed on the shoulders of players, and that's what they were, they were addressing dressing in general and this just fell under that umbrella as opposed to walking up in there from a, for a collective bargaining negotiation and saying let's make sure you add this so i think we have to put it in its proper context okay 